But the uh, cantaloupe this time said watermelon's so high, just have money to buy them. Well, why they're so high? I don't know. I got news for them. When I buy, they ain't going to be that high. Yeah, but will they be red in the middle? Oh, you want them red in the middle? Yeah, <laughs> unless they're supposed to be yellow. I've never eaten any of yellow ones, have you? I used to raise yellow seedless watermelons. Really? And they was really good, but I had to order seeds every year. Uh -huh. And they got so popular, I couldn't get seeds. Got what? They got so popular, they couldn't keep up with seed right. production. You had to order you mean, them. You mean they're, what, are they hybrid? Yeah. You had to order them in June in order to get them next year. Well, you can raise your own hybrid seed, can't you, if you uh, cover the blooms? I don't know how you do it, but you couldn't raise seeds in a seedless watermelon. There right. wasn't no seed to raise. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about the yellow one. <laughs> the yellow and seedless. Uh, yeah, I could have covered the whole watermelon and still wouldn't have had no seeds. It has some little biddings in there. Yeah, I know, developed. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is something, something to think about. <laughs> I first found them, they, they, they'd get round about that big, just right. as sweet and pretty right. as they could be. And I started raising them. I raised them about three years. The last time I ordered seeds, I couldn't get none. The next year I ordered seeds and couldn't get none, and I quit raising them. Quit fooling with watermelon, got busy. But they's good. If we had some irrigation, that power uh, that field you got cleared, boy, that makes some money to plant down watermelons. I do what I done, you know, it's just kind of a sinkhole down there, a bowl. Right. Right. I went down there and plowed that up, worked it up good, covered it with plastic, went through and cut holes about every six feet, put watermelon seeds in there, right. didn't go back till time to get them. Right. And I just, I got them with the truck loads. Oh, wait, what, uh, do you use clear plastic or what? Black. Yeah. I went down there one time, Clarence Moore's cow got out, and his sister come out there to try to catch it. And it was down there, and she was running it through my watermelon patch. She'd run it over through there and go after it and turn around and run it back again. I hollered and said, just wait a minute, I'll come and help you. And I went and finally caught the old cow, tied her up, and Clarence come out there, and he didn't have enough sense to get her back across the fence. He had to take her out there for him. But with the clients more. Yeah. Since we're on television, I won't say much more about him, but he wasn't right. much of a cattleman. Yeah, I know. And or, or else. Well, I ain't gonna say too much. <laughs> I ain't told no lies, so what I said I'd stand up. <laughs> All righty. What else is going on? About it. You got any specials up there? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I got uh, three real good weed eaters. I got two. That uh, I, well, I got uncounted two out the house. Okay. okay. I don't want to sell those weed eaters. And uh, I've got uh, one good uh, uh, lawnmower that's going to come online here shortly as soon as I go get a piece to fit the... Uh, uh, starter mechanism you know, you pull. You're riding or? No, it's a push. Okay. And uh, I've got, uh, I don't know, I've got plenty of baby items and I've got uh, uh, a big uh, uh, counter, one of those, uh, uh, what kind of, what is that on the top there? Pamica, Pamica counter about 12 foot long. I did have a, a, what, a four or five foot extension on the side, but somebody got that, and, uh... Kitchen counter. Huh? A kitchen counter. Yeah, a kitchen counter, real nice. Yeah. And, uh, I've got some nice refrigerators and washers and, uh, dryers. Um, I just, I've got nice couches and... Easy chairs and 
Uh, you know, got any uneasy chairs? Yeah, I've got a pedestal oak table, which is one of those high ones. i got the high chairs to go with it. And uh, oh, I've got a big old uh, dog box that would suffice for a goat box. And uh, <laughs> probably put both, you put both of them in there, I bag. They can both fit in a barrel. Yeah, yeah, they would. Well, if you ever decide you want those two to lose their standing, in the community, we'll get a small barrel and run them in there. Well, I felt sorry for my goats, and I put a cover up there over part of their right. lot. Mm. They stay there. I figured they'd try to climb up on it, but right. I guess they know it'll fall when they get on it. Right. Yeah. I don't see why in the world mine would ever want to get out. They got more than they can eat in the <laughs> next year. Well, they're curious sorts of things. They are. They got to run and see what everything is. Yeah, they are. And uh, but they're they're exciting animals. I like to be around them, you know. And uh, uh, I used to always like to. We, we let them run out when I lived at home when I was a young boy. I we just had so much land there, uh, you wasn't even worried about it getting on anybody else's, you know. And uh, I let mine run out when I'm there. Yeah, I know you do. Yeah. And I let one of them run out the other time. I keep one. Uh, tied, right. so he won't. Uh, there'll be a reason for the other to stay around, right. and I'll try to change them out. Right. Well, John and Deer, they do real, real good. They go up there among them uh, weeds, and they, they'd rather eat limbs off little bushes than they would. Yeah, they climb a tree to get a vine. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, uh, and I like that. And they're working on it. I can tell where they make a little headway. Probably about November they'll have it down like I it. figure there won't be a green leaf side out there by the middle of January. <laughs> Probably won't be. But that's John and Deer, and uh, they are, uh, one of them's a, a brother to Briggs and Stratton. Briggs and Stratton. Yeah. Uh, and the other one is a sister to nobody. Right. Yeah. I don't think. <laughs> He's a little Nubian, doesn't have any horns. Really? Yeah. I need one of them. Yeah. I got two hornions. All right, now I one of them's hornier than the other. <laughs> yeah, you told me about His that. His horn's about that long. Right. <laughs> yeah, you told me about that. Well, but what else is going on, anything? That's about it. If anybody needs any roofing material or any vinyl siding or windows or doors or sheetrock or needs a building, oh, we got everything except plywood and, and steps. Right. Ain't got no steps. We're like Dixie You ain't concrete. got no steps? No. Well, Dixie you Concrete ain't, ain't either. With, uh, uh, Dixie. Dixie Concrete. Dixie, Dixie ain't got no steps, but they've got everything it takes to build them out of except the extra manpower. Right. Well, they probably could furnish that for a small it's a price thing. right. Yeah. yeah. Sure could. I, I, they haul a lot of concrete because I see them boys on the road every day. And, you know, they almost on the road as much as the La Follette Police Department. Yeah, well, no, no, hey. <coughs> no, no, no. The okay. Police Department's got a lot more manpower. Didn't somebody tell you there's a hundred, over a hundred people work at the La Police Department? I don't know. I haven't heard those figures. Well, I'm not going to say that's true, but I swear I heard that somewhere. I couldn't believe it. I, I have not ever heard what their, uh, uh, I, in oh, fact, I don't believe it. I don't I, think. I don't think that's right. I don't believe that's right. I don't think so. It wouldn't be online where you could determine. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. If they had that many on there, they'd want to keep it secret right. anyway. Well, <laughs> they sure run the wheels off what they got. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, I say again, when they have a fire uptown, I see uh, uh, one of your fire trucks going from down here at. Uh, uh, cause from uh, the mall up there, and when they have power down here, see one coming out of town. So uh, I just don't understand that. Now, you said they somebody explained it to you one time. Yeah, I thought I understood it. So I walked away, and then I realized I don't understand the damn thing you said. It don't make a bit of sense to me. It looks to me like the purpose of the fire is to get there as quick as possible. 
Well, good to be like old buddy of mine who was having some, some financial difficulty, and somebody called him up and said, Jimmy, so you know your house on Kivet Drive's on fire? Jimmy said, goodness gracious, I said, well, don't call the fire department, let me call them, I'm closer. <laughs> so we so waited about 45 minutes and he called the fire department. Yeah. And uh, they said, yeah, somebody's already reported, he said, somebody double-crossed me. <laughs> Well, here's the thing about it. If it, if it, what's the point in having more than one fire station if you go from the farthest point? Why don't they just build one in the middle of town? That's, too, be, that's too simple. It'd be fire to everybody that way. That's too simple. They couldn't get nowhere in a hurry. Yeah, no, no. They could use that post office down there. Ain't nobody else using it. They might as well. They might as well, you know. Uh, uh, I thought the whole purpose of zoning was to plan a community. So they zoned, zoned the city and then sent the heart of the city to the outskirts. The most remote, less business part of the city is up there. And they sent, they put let the post office go up to the other end of town. And that don't make a bit of sense. Well, it depends on who owned that property for it. Well, yeah. yeah. That's what has to make sense. And, uh, uh, you know, to me, the ideal situation uh, as I saw it in town, was to have taken the old Shelby buildings over there on First Street and built an entire governmental complex there. They could put a library, they could put city hall, they could put post office, and they, you know, everything that they needed right there. Mm -hmm. And it would have uh, reinvigorated that uh, area uh, and uh, yeah, and it would have kept things kind of where they ought to have been. Well, they ought to have done it as they had to replace something. First off, they didn't need a new library. No. That was a waste of money. There ain't no way to justify building a brick and mortar library in today's technology right. field. I agree. And uh, as far as City Hall, they got enough room to screw up. Well, so now, you, you have to remember on that library, there's about five people every day go down there to read the newspaper for free. Well, yeah, I know. They have how many is it? A hundred thousand visitors a week or something like that. I may exaggerate a little bit. Well, let's say uh, 20 of them will be there to read the newspaper every morning. Yeah, I know. That's a scam is what it is. You know, uh, we were uh, kind of uh, hitting a little bit around some of the problems that are coming out up in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, I want to hit a little bit further south, than, of, uh, a little bit further north of Washington, D.C., up to the state of New Jersey, where you have uh, a, a Republican governor and uh, you have a uh, Democratic senator, uh, Frank Lautenberg, uh, who died recently, and I, I'm not casting any disparaging remarks on Senator Lautenberg. But do you remember how Senator Lautenberg got in, uh, in this last time? Well, let's see, did a Republican die and he got appointed? No, he had a Republican that was beating the Lord out of the nominee, the Democrat nominee. And it come down with just a few days shy of the election, far closer or you could not replace the candidate, uh, but they replaced him anyhow with Frank Lautenberg. Okay, you're talking about the last election. Yeah, last election. I don't know what was the last or the one before that. I believe it was one before that, maybe. I don't remember. Yeah, Why did they replace him? Because the Democrat was getting beat in the polls. Really. Is it the guy that talked about um, the Indian? Uh, I don't remember who the Democrat candidate was, but he was dropping in the polls, dropping yeah. in the polls. They got, I think, within three weeks or 25 days of the election, and they replaced him with Lautenberg and won. I didn't know that part of it. Yeah, he did. Uh, Lautenberg had retired, and... Uh, they talked him into taking this guy's place because in the polls, this guy that was running against him was 
Republican was beating the Lord out of him. So, uh, well, had he been a senator before? Yeah. How did he get in the first time? Oh, Lautenberg. I don't know. He's been. Uh, I think he was appointed when a Republican died. Maybe, maybe, but that was in, back in the sixties. Yeah. And uh, but this was in the, uh, I think, uh, early two thousand. Uh, they, they ran. Lautenberg retired, and uh, um, this guy that was uh, running uh, for the Democrats was getting a large beat out of him in the polls. I remember uh, that. So they just uh, uh, kicked him out, which was entirely against the state law. But the Democrats controlled the state legislature, and they quickly made some changes to take care of that. Let's see if I can find out how that went. Uh, see if I can find out how yeah, that went. Yeah, I did that. So, uh, I don't know what, uh, what's, what's that guy's name, the uh, governor of New Jersey? Christie. Huh? Christie. Yeah, Chris, Christie. Uh, I don't know what he's going to do, but I guarantee if he does not appoint a Republican, he'll never get the Republican nominee for president. He might get the Democrat. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's see how he got in the office first time. Yeah, I remember that real well, which it looked like they was going to get a Republican senator from New Jersey, and they, they changed, they moved the goalposts. Democrat Harrison A. Williams resigned in March of 82 after being implicated in the Abscam scandal. Wow. After Williams' resignation, Republican Governor Thomas Keene appointed Republican Nicholas F. Brady to serve in the seat. Brady served in the Senate through the primary and general elections, but did not run for the seat himself. In the general election, Lautenberg faced popular Republican Congresswoman Millicent Fenwick, Fenwick. She ran on a very progressive platform and in the polls in January of 1982 put her ahead by 18 points. Even Lautenberg quipped that she was the most popular candidate in the country. Lautenberg spent more of his money, more of his own money, eventually outspending Fenwick two to one he emphasized President Reagan's unpopularity, reminded the voters that she was, she would be a vote for Republican majority in the Senate, and called Fenwick, who was 72, eccentric and erratic, but denied that he was referring to her age. He did, however, point out that she would be almost 80 at the end of the first term and was therefore unlikely to gain much senior in the Senate. Lautenberg won by 51 to 48 percent in what was considered a major upset. Oh, well, yeah, I remember that, too. Now that you uh, made me familiar with it. Well, I don't keep up in New Jersey politics too much. I don't either, because they're, they're almost they're next to being as corrupt as, corrupt as Cook County, Illinois, 
you know. I don't care much for Chris Christie either. I don't like Chris Christie. I really don't. Uh, I don't. I think he's a rhino Republican. I think you're right. One of them rhinoceros are Republicans. Yeah, that's that right. One of them blue rhinoceros. Yeah, one of them are blue rhinoceros. Right. Speaking of blue rhinoceros. We got that guy down in the middle of the road and saw him real holler. Right. He can outdo a blue rhinoceros any day of the week. Yeah, right in the middle of the road. Five six right. two five four four four, and that's, he don't fool them my rhinoceroses. Right. And I only tell He's you got what, his own patented what, alligator what, supply. What he does do when you bring your tank in there, you know the first thing he does? What's he that? purges it. Why would he want to do that? He wants to let all the old cell gas and uh, uh, that it might be from some foreign country out of the tank so he can put his good Digger Wilson uh So you get that propane. there quality aroma. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to dilute it, you know. Uh, uh, it might be like mixing ammonia and uh, uh, mysol. Real? Clorox, you don't, you don't Clorox, ammonia and Clorox, yeah. yeah. You don't want to do that. Why? Well, if you breathe it, it's probably going to kill you. <laughs> well, I'll try not to breathe it the next time I mix some. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But, uh, yeah, you're going down, Digger does purge your tanks, which means you get a full 20 gallons, pounds. Of, uh, 20 pounds of uh, propane. Uh, He's the only man in the country to get 20 gallons in a four-gallon tank. In a four-gallon tank. That way. Oh, he does get up and stomp it in there. You yeah, know, he's got big is. feet. Right. But we appreciate him. He's got, got to see him, a new customer down there today. He was wanting a... Uh, no, yesterday. He was, he was wanting a... Uh, was he uh, open uh, yesterday? Huh? Was he open yesterday? Yeah. Monday? Huh? Yesterday was Monday. Yeah, it was open, yeah. No, yeah. Digger. I don't know what Digger was there. Hey, I sent him down there, but he wasn't there, was he? No. Nope. Okay, well, sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, but I did send him a customer, and he said, you talking about the fellow down there in the middle of the road? I said, yeah, right down there in the middle of the road. Five, six, two, five, four, four, four. Right. So, uh, now that's enough about them blue rhinoceroses. Yeah. What are we going to do about all these... Uh, crooks that we got up here in the Internal Revenue Department. Uh, I don't know. They must all went that, from the city of La Follette up there. I think so. I really do. You know, but you know, those guys, they're just order takers. They got all their orders from Washington, D.C. Yeah, and they don't know who thought of it. Huh? They don't know who thought of it. They have no idea who Somebody up there, some uh, fellow works up there and, uh, and uh, well, uh, Paper department oh, down in the cloakroom. Toilet paper department yeah, toilet up there in Cincinnati. The one, he's the one that come up with it. Well, they tried to sing his thing over. What do you think about what they said about uh, oh, uh, what's the spokesman's name? Carney. Paid liar. Is, is that Art Carney? Art's brother. Is that Art's brother? I don't know. But do you know what they've nicknamed him? The liar. Paid liar. What? Baghdad Bob. Baghdad Bob. <laughs> Baghdad Bob, the bombs and the missiles were falling. He said, yeah, uh, <laughs> Saddam is taking a little vacation. Everything's okay. All's quiet here. <laughs> you could hear the bomb blast yep. in the back, you know. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's who uh, uh, Carney got his uh, uh, training from, was from Bob Dad. Bag Dad Bob. Not to be confused with Wild Dad Bob. No, no, no way. You know, I always tell the truth even if I have to lie about it. You know, I'm not like uh, uh, Bag Dad Bob, you know. Well, I, I found know. out that if you, anybody you want, anytime you want to make a liar out of somebody, it don't hurt to start out by naming them Bob. <laughs> no, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good way. They're doing it, uh, but I don't know what to tell you. You know, I have absolutely no faith, not just because it's Democrat, but I have no faith in the people we have that head our various departments in Washington. I have absolutely no uh, faith in the uh, Secretary of the Treasury, who was, I think, very closely tied uh, to the targeting of the uh, 
uh, patriot uh, and a Tea Party candidate. I have no faith in the head of the R I R S uh, uh, at that time, uh, who is what Lois Lerner. Well, so she she's been she's on uh, paid furlough. Well, I understand that. They got she, some guy named. He was the head of the uh, yeah. uh, R S there during the time much of this went on. Then you got the lady that's now heading the. Uh, Obamacare division of the R.S. She was implicated in there also. Uh, and you've got uh, Schulman, who actually laughed in the Congressional Committee's face in a lot of ways when they asked him questions. He, you know, they, don't forget, he was a Bush appointee. Well, I can't help that, what he was. You know, he ought to be rode out of town on the rail. Uh, but I, I understand that Bush is probably uh, responsible for all of this. I, I'm sure he is. Uh, and, uh, I bet he's just wondering down there in Texas when they're going to subpoena him. Sure, what are you looking up? Shulman? Yeah. I see his beady little eyes. He was commissioner November the 9th, of 2012, and then they got that there, Lois Lerner. Was that her name, well, Lois? Now he was he was the commission when? Through uh, November, last November. And then they put this year Lerner woman in there, whatever her name is. Lois Lerner. Yeah, and then they got a new one there last week. Yeah. Uh, he's got a good old Irish name, I can't think of what it is. Wasesky or something like that. But the Internal Revenue is the most powerful agency in the world, bar none. They have all the power without having to go through uh, uh, legal means to enforce their regulations. They, uh, they don't have to have a, a search warrant to come in and take over your business. They don't have to have a show proof of anything to confiscate your checking account or any assets that you have. And uh, it's a brutal... Uh, now wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. She wasn't a director. Replacing a minute. See, she's a. She was. A, she oversaw the agency's determination division. She wasn't a head. That there, uh, Schumann. Schumann. Okay, then uh, there was a Miller guy, Stephen Miller. Right, now, what was Lois Lerner, though? Was she in charge of Stephen the, Miller was in there for... Uh, Stephen Miller was ahead from November through last week, and now they've got uh, Werfel, Danny Werfel. In yeah, there. I told you he's a good old Irish boy. Uh, but uh, this Sounds Lerner right. woman, was she not over the section that uh, uh, approves uh, your yep. tax-exempt status? Yep. yep. Okay, so she was at the heart. Uh, of all of the uh, problems that they have there. Well, they've got Ken Corbin selected to be the acting director, exempt organizations, tax exempt government entities division. So he's, she, she while well, she's on paid vacation, right. they've got another guy in there watching things right now. Right. Well, you know, uh, they asked the new director, one that's supposed to give a report. Uh, you know, he said he felt he was in favor that he very much wanted to hold people accountable for what they've done. And one of the committee members asked him, do you consider uh, paid leave yeah. as being uh, holding people responsible? And you take like this old guy that shot all those people up at Fort Hood. 
he has grown in salary $275,000 since he's been incarcerated. Mm -hmm. Now, he, he's making a lot more money in jail than I can make out here on the streets. Well, you're just in the wrong job. I ain't shot nobody. <laughs> that's what you ain't it's. shot enough people. <laughs> Maybe I ought to shoot a few more. And you know, I could get up a collection fund if you'd kind of let me steer you in the right direction. <laughs> you're, you're, if I shoot the right one. Yeah, I might be able to help your legal fund. <laughs> I know what you'd do. I'd call Ronnie. I'd say, Ronnie, look, I'm down here on death row. And Ronnie'd say, yeah. I said, uh, you know, they've shaved my feet, they've shaved my head. He said, yeah. I said, what'll I do? Ronnie said, well, don't sit down until I get there. <laughs> well, you know, uh, there's a lawyer over here, Jenkins over here, and the guy had a reputation of, uh, he'd get anybody out of anything, and had one guy that, uh, he was, they sentenced him to, to death row electric chair, and, and he just looked hopeless for that guy, and, and he went to talk to him every day, and he'd go in there, and every day, faithfully, he'd go in there every day and talk to that guy, and it's getting closer and closer to the time to send him, get him executed, and finally one of these, this fella over the jail there said, what's the use of you coming in here every day, Mr. Jenkins? That guy ain't gonna make it. Come find out, he'd been going in there, and he'd unscrew the light bulb, hold a chair and that guy plug his finger in a little every day. He's getting him immune to that electricity. <laughs> uh, uh, that's, about what, that's probably what they would need to do to me. <laughs> they said that their, that their uh, feller, that, uh, I guess it's Obama's brother or something, he was, uh, uh, had a, organized an army over there. Now, he figured that he'd get more of that there uh, foreign aid if he organized an army. So he called Obama up and told him they was going to start a war if he didn't do something. And Obama said, well, you know, I've got so many airplanes, I've got the strongest air force in the country. And the guy said, well, let me call you back. He said, oh, yeah, and i got a half million men in the army. He said, well, well, just hold off, let me call you back. And he called him back the next day, and he said, well, we've rounded up an old crop duster, and we've got... Uh, some hang gliders and stuff. We've just decided we're going to have that war. And Obama said, well, you know, I've got so many uh, naval vessels, all these carriers and submarines and everything, and said, I've got uh, a million men in my army now. So it went on a little while longer. This guy said, well, just hold off. We won't start that war yet. Let me think about it. But I sure do need some more foreign aid. If you could manage that, we wouldn't have to go to war. Well, he called back and he said, well, we've got three rowboats and a canoe, and we got one battleship here that we was able to get to float again, and said, we've just decided to go ahead and have that war. And Obama said, well, you know, <clears throat> I've got uh, I've got Marines here that have been trained in all sorts of combat. We've got artillery. We've got everything. And, and he said, uh, I've, got, uh, I've got my uh, army up to two million men now. And the guy says, well, let me get back with you. So he called him back a couple of days. He said, we've decided not to go to war. And Obama said, my Army and Navy and Marines scared you off, didn't you? And did it? And the guy says, no, we just can't figure out how to feed two million prisoners. <laughs> That's the truth. I thought maybe they were going to tell you, so you've got one thing against you. He says, what's that? you got France on your side. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Well, I don't know. France got seems to have more gumption than we well, do yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, but uh, they've got the French Foreign Legion. You know, they got they those disbanded guys. Them. They got those guys couldn't go home if they wanted to. Yeah. They probably all of them are, are wanted for something worse <laughs> at home. Well, did know? they do anything besides fight Arabs? Huh? Did they do anything besides fight Arabs? I don't believe that's the only thing they've ever done. I think they sent them to Vietnam for uh, and just. <laughs> Kind of on vacation. Yeah, but don't wait to get them to tell them they're the Vietnamese or Arabs. <laughs> I think they sent them there when they was on vacation. Our troops went from Vietnam to Hawaii to rest and recuperate. I think yeah. France let their guys go to Vietnam. <laughs> Den uh, Bun Phu, Dun Bun, Dun 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 Bun, Dun Bun Phu. There's been so much invasion of the Arab land. <laughs> Most of the Arabs 
are red-headed. That, <laughs> did you know that? <laughs> no, I didn't yeah, know that. Starting with the Crusades from the, the Scottish people from the Crusades right on down, there are an awful lot of red-headed Arabs. And <laughs> well, how could something like that happen? <laughs> well, I didn't that's think... Called, that's called fraternizing with the enemy. And what they call... Um, uh, what do you call it when you you breed the population out of the culture out of existence? Anyway, cultural genocide. Yeah. But uh, well, that's what we're doing here in this country. Eventually, we're gonna fade them out. They're gonna fade us out. Yeah. <laughs> we're all gonna be the same color of gray. Is what we're gonna be. Uh, that's about the truth. The only thing is the. Uh, uh, pigmentation, black pigmentation in uh, uh, your genetic scheme is dominant over no pigmentation, you know. So, <laughs> you got a little problem there. Uh, I'd say we got the problem. <laughs> I don't, not at my age. <laughs> it is complete, com completely immaterial, immaterial to me. <laughs> Irreverent and immaterial. <laughs> Irrelevant and immaterial. It's, uh, irrele irrelevant and it's immaterial to me. You know, I'll be, what, 79 years old on uh, this Wednesday, Wednesday night. Uh, it's on the ninth. Uh, it's on the ninth this year. Yeah. No, but it's Sunday, isn't it? I see. Sounds right. This is the fourth. Wednesday the fifth. Uh, Thursday the sixth. Friday, seven, Saturday, eight, and Sunday, the night, yeah. yeah. You come to my party? Where it is it? Huh? Where is it? Well, I ain't decided yet. <laughs> Can I bring my goat? You know, just bring your present, you know. Bring my goat? Might, we ought to barbecue one of them goats. Now, let's start with yours and see how they taste. <laughs> Mine's too tough. <laughs> Uh, mine's the same age as yours. <laughs> yeah, folks, we, uh, we hope uh, my 79th year was as good as my 78th. You know, in my 77th, I had, well, I can't say it was bad. I took a ride in uh, the nicest little ambulance. That, uh, and then you got kicked out. Vital care. Uh, vital care carried me to the hospital, and I believe it was April of, of 2011, and uh, uh, March or April, and I uh, stayed five days in there and uh, fully recuperated. I think, you reckon I'm immune to bad uh, uh, tomato juice now? You reckon I developed an immunity? To rotten mater juice? Yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> but I, we can, I can get you some and try it. <laughs> no thank you. No thank you. <laughs> oh. Who would have thought that it would take five days to recover from a little rotten tomato <laughs> juice? I think it was all them... Uh, uh, Little uh, thing just swim around that tomato juice. There wasn't nothing wrong with the tomato juice. It's what was swimming around. If you let it little, let it ferment a little longer, you could have drunk uh, it. Yeah. Well, I've heard of strawberry wine, but I never heard of tomato wine. Well, you could have distilled it twice, and made brandy, let it ferment, and then distill it, and you'd have right, had tomato yeah, well, brandy. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, well, boy, what I had, it wouldn't have hurt me. <laughs> It'd been made or soup, wouldn't it? <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Didn't it taste a little funny to you or anything? I don't even remember. It was so late at night, I was turning that thing up. And, no, I don't think it tasted all that bad. I took me to a couple of old folks and said, put the jar back in the refrigerator. And, uh, boy, it wasn't too, wasn't too long till I started having some serious pains. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know what to think about a man that can't tolerate a little rotten tomato juice. Yeah. 
I don't know what to think about a man that would just be so appalled. You know, are you sure he wasn't on the uh, Animal Control Commission when he got appalled about all this stuff? You remember? Who? You remember the animal yeah. control commission? They were appalled. Well, who about else it. got appalled? Huh? Who else is appalled? Well, I'm talking about the Obama's appalled about all this problem that's going on in the IRS. He just can't believe it. I wish he was over the animal shelter instead of uh, what he's over. <laughs> he he just can't believe. You know, he he acts like he has nothing to do with it that he is fighting against all this stuff. Well, it's a big country. He can't be expected to run the whole thing. <laughs> like I said before, he is only president when he wants to be president. And uh, uh, did you hear, hear the guy on, uh, I believe it was, may have been Hannity last night, that was telling about the agreement that was reached between mm. Obama and the Clintons? Yep. Guy named Klein wrote a book. Huh? Guy named Klein wrote a book, didn't he? Yeah. Good old Irish boy. <clears throat> you reckon? Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> Everybody's Irish to you. <laughs> Everybody's Irish to you. <laughs> yeah, he wrote uh, and he told how uh, Bill Clinton agreed to give the keynote speech, speech at the 2012 uh, uh, convention, or actually, I guess. Well, him and Chris that. Christie got him elected. Oh uh, yeah, I know that. Yeah, Bill Clinton, and uh, in return, uh, uh, Obama would support Hillary for the 2016 presidency. But uh, I think it got out of the bag how much uh, the Clintons disliked the Obamas. And how much the Obamas dislike the Clintons, you know. But you know, it don't make any difference about that with the Democrats whether they like one another or not. They all work for the same thing, and that's to put the American people down. Well, I don't know where the Hilda Beast is going to get elected in 2016 or not. If a Republican puts another rhino up, we'll have Hillary Clinton in there for four well, if years. if you try to out Democrats, the Democrats, you've lost. Yep. Okay? You cannot out Democrat the Democrats. <laughs> uh, yeah, they got training at it, don't they? You know, they've had, they got too much experience. I don't know why. I mean, they put uh, Bob Dole out because uh, they was afraid that... that Anybody else would be too conservative. They put, ah, um, um, uh, uh, McCain out. Because everybody else, McCain, I wouldn't vote for him if he's running by himself. Uh, no, if he's the only one running, I wouldn't vote for I him. I mean, I voted for him trying to trying to keep I, Obama I what, out. Dude, that, it's not but two people, I mean, two people that I would vote for before I would vote for McCain. That'd be Bob Corker. And uh, 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 Lamar Alexander. Yeah, I know it. And you're going to have to think, anybody that raised Megan McCain and not disown her, I couldn't vote for him on that reason. <laughs> I mean, you talk about an idiot. She's an idiot. And then they got, uh, they put up Romney. I, Romney's a good feller, but he wasn't the right candidate. Yeah. But we had to have somebody that was neutral, somebody that would appeal to both sides, and it didn't get us nothing. If they'd put some rabid conservative in there, a Barry Goldwater type. And then get somebody as vice president to yeah. appease the other. Yeah, I mean, they might get beat, but at least they'd give it a shot. Well, you can't, I mean, if you run and you got the same objectives as the people that you run against, what difference does it make who wins? You know, Except for the Obamacare, I would rather Obama been in there for four years than John McCain. I would too. John McCain would have done more damage, I believe, because he was for everything Obama was for. Right, well, yeah. Well, he would have got cap and trade through and everything else. Right, well, yeah. I agree with you, and you can't out Democrat the Democrats and beat them. You have to. You have to offer an alternative here in this country. Well, any time they want to compromise, it's the right that has to go toward the left instead of the left coming toward the well, right, too. When you compromise with the left, you've lost. Yeah. 
I mean, they start so far on the wrong side, you can give them any ground you done beat. And first off, they're always arguing for the wrong thing now, anyway. They, they, they I boil, hate they more government. They uh, controversy on Eric Holder down to the fact of whether or not he was going to prosecute yeah. uh, the uh, Fox News journalist. Well, he had to go uh, swear a lie if he wasn't planning on doing it. He, right, he had to tell a lie when he got the yeah. uh, search warrant and the uh, uh, other affidavits that he provided. And the biggest thing was he got all those things. He had to uh, shop for a judge that would approve it because... He had to uh, find another corrupt judge. He had to find him another corrupt law officer. And uh, uh, then uh, he swore he didn't know nothing about it. Yeah. It's about like what goes on down at City Hall. You know, and I don't know who said it, but they said if you want to test a man, you don't, you don't torment him, you promote him. Now you look at uh, Job, when God was tormenting Job, he didn't back out, he stuck with God. God just kept pouring it on him and he just wouldn't deny God. Well... God made Saul king and made a fool out of him. Right, yeah. That happens in local politics a lot. You take a man that's maybe riding a garbage truck or something, and then you you give him a position of authority, and you did make a fool out of him. Right. And that would happen. I mean, I ain't throwing off on garbage workers. It could be a guy that I just mean, worked for know, the most of them. Yeah, not yeah. all of them, but most of them pretty good. Yeah, some of them were. Yeah. But usually, I mean, the whole point is the best way to test the character of a man is put him in a position of authority and right. you'll see what he's made out of right. then. that's true. And, and I'll tell you what. If you need any car parts, and you will if you hang around Richard, you any. You can test this man any time you want to go up there and talk to him. What man? It's, uh, uh, Randy. Uh, Bradley? Bradley up at... Uh, uh, Napper. Napa Auto Parts, right across from uh, IGA. On, uh, the NAPA, right over from the IGA. Right, there you go. They got whatever you need. In fact, I got to go up there and get a uh, solenoid for a V10 Ford motor. A V10 yeah. Ford motor? Yeah. That up yonder? No. What's the, where, where you got a V10 in? In that motor, huh? Is it? Yeah. Mm. Ford? V10 Ford motor in it. What model is that thing? 99, I believe. Is it that late? Huh? Is it that late? Yeah, it's 99. Right, man, that's 12 years, 13 years old, 14 years old. Well, no, but I ain't never had nothing with a 2 in its first name. Huh? I ain't never owned a car with a 2 in its first name. A 2? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right. That's getting close. <laughs> How about that? Well, I've got the, uh, I got the Jeep, and I've got the Volkswagen, and I've got the uh, little old uh, Mazda uh, that I paid for. All those are in the twos. One's a 2009, one's 2001, two of them 2001, and I paid for all of them. And I'm dry, I'm riding around in my remodeled. Dodge Dakota truck. Not me. I, I ain't got nothing. I ain't never had nothing that new. <laughs> yeah, I'm riding around with my remodeled Dodge Dakota truck. <laughs> I've remodeled that thing a number of ways. <laughs> now, uh, what model is it? It's 2001. More you give it hell, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a good one. It's got a hundred and 86,000 on it, and uh, it's never failed me. So, uh, who you looking at, the old, uh, uh, old, that's got nothing to do with the Muslim religion, you know. I He's know all, I know all uh, Muslims are not terrorists. He wasn't a Muslim. Huh? He wasn't a Muslim. How's that got shot up at movie theater out there? Okay. Maybe he was a wannabe. Yeah. 
Yeah, they probably want to be. But then you know, all Muslims are not terrorists. But uh, all terrorists have been Muslim. Whether that says anything or not. I'm trying to find out. What are you trying to find? I'm trying to find out uh, the schedule there so I can watch this show that's on when it comes back on. Folks, you ought to come down and see some of these dog houses that Ronnie's got. <laughs> yeah, you ought to. I forgot one. to mention them. That was just ideal for a honeymoon suite. It had a division in between. Yeah, that, that way you didn't have to put up with all that racket from your woman. It's a uh, it's a doggy condo townhouse condo. A townhouse. Oh yeah, okay. And both of them just name, another name for a fancy apartment house. Well, well. So, let's see. We ought to tell them about them people holding your hand into the hospital. Oh, yeah, the nap is 9562-9406. Got all yeah. sorts of parts at their disposal. Over a quarter of a million within their own inventory. And that's not talking about them, that complete library of parts that Randy keeps up there under his counter that he can look up about anything. So you don't have to worry about not being able to get it if you go up in Napa. He's going to get it for you, and at a price that's very, very competitive to what you get if you went to the manufacturing guy. Um. You don't think the EPA is after conservatives also, do you? Yep. I even think they've done that locally. Huh? I even think they've done that locally. <laughs> Probably. You know, I talked to uh, EPA today. What did you talk well, to them about? actually, there's the Water uh, Quality Division down in North Carolina regarding my sand pumping operation. And she says, I don't think it's going to be necessary for me to come out there again. She says, we still got all the information we had when you had your previous uh, Permit. Now, when are you going to start this pump spumping operation? Uh, probably, probably the first of uh, August. Good and warm then. I want it to be good and warm. You always know, pump sand out of that river down there uh, before they dammed it up. Yeah. And what I did, I had my motor and my sand pump up on the bank, and I had my suction pipe run out over. Uh, uh, tires that were pumped up in rims and it was uh, uh, wired to these tire rims and it would float out there where I was on a float, not a whole lot bigger than that table there, but yeah, a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. And I'd get out there and of course the river wasn't but maybe seven, eight foot deep at the most and I had a long pole attached to the end of that four inch pipe and uh, it come along and then I had a uh, 45 degree uh, fitting that kind of turned it down and I'd, I'd fish around with that thing and pump 40 yards of sand an hour out there on that little old float. So I'm doing it different this time. I'm going to put my pump and my motor out in the middle of the river and run my exhaust hose, which I had to do too. I had to had to uh, uh, run all my sand back across those tires I had it laying on and run it up and shoot it through a screen. And uh, so I'm doing it a little bit different this time. I'm going to have me, have me a pontoon boat out there with my motor and my sand pump on it. I don't know where you get a pontoon boat. Oh, I got one. Now, I ain't talking about the one out your house. I got another one. Okay. It's a 24 footer. That's a 28 foot out your house. Uh, I gotta come get that thing. How big's the river down there? Well, where I'm gonna be pumping is a pretty wide place right there in the river because I'm way back up the lake. I'm not 
in the big part of the lake. I'm way back where the river comes down. Is it in that river's been dammed up? Huh? Has the river dammed up? Yeah, there's a lake there. That's the reason I'm having the pump so deep. What's the name of the lake? Lake Reese. You look it up there, and you see how many, how big it is. Uh, North Carolina lakes, Lake Reese, and it's well, they dammed the UR River up. R E E S E. R W E S E. Ashboro. Yeah. Oh, Tabernacle from our, our Randolph County. I don't see you there no more. Huh? I don't see you no, there. But that, hey, back up. I believe that's my son-in-law right there. No, but I know him. My son-in-law fishes out there. That's a lake right pretty. Uh, I'm up at the headwaters. Uh, right where it becomes a lake. And I'm, uh, well, let's see. Uh, if you go back up this way. Can't go on that. Huh? Can't go on that. You can't go up any further. No, not on that. And I have to get a different map. Let's see. Maps. Tell them about vital care. We just got a minute. Well, vital care, you know, uh, you got a man that runs a uh, medical transportation system here by the name of Vital Care that uh, has 40 some years experience. He operates an independent uh, medical transportation, ambulance service, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and uh, uh, he operates completely independent of any government financing, any tax money or anything that would uh, uh, cause you to have to pay for somebody else's transportation to the hospital. And uh, they, they, they practice tender loving care they have up-to-date equipment. Well, and I'm not saying that the uh, uh, government ambulance service, uh, they have some excellent employees. Uh, they have good equipment. In fact, they're about to run that uh, new ambulance they got to death, that old big one they bought. You know, I think they used it for everything to transport everybody anywhere or everywhere in it, plus going to uh, uh, the... Uh, corner market to get hot dogs. So, uh, but Vital Care has up-to-date equipment. Uh, they'll treat you with tender loving care. And if you need them, call 562-9370. Uh, and uh, they'll be glad uh, to come pick you up. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll see you tomorrow night on Channel 12 and back here on UGG TV if you want to watch right, us. We'll we hope you will. We will do that. Thank you, everybody. All right. All right.